What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video, as you can tell by the title, it's going to be my opinions around the signings we made yesterday and what a hell of a day it was yesterday. Just signing after signing, exit after exit, just a lot of ha a lot has happened at the club over the last 24 hours or so um, since we played the uh, Preston and lost 3-0 in that shambolic performance. But I'm going to go be going through all, every single signing, what I think of them etc and it's just gonna be a roundup of what my opinions are and then i'm gonna ask for your opinion in the comment section below so to start off um our dealings in the january transfers if you like we signed tobias figueredo i'm not sure if i've said that right probably butchered his name but he's a 23 year old portuguese portuguese center half that's come from sporting uh sporting lisbon i don't know one of the teams in portugal but he's on loan to the end of the season with a view to a permanent deal. We signed him before the Preston game, so he he was there at the City ground because there's been pictures of him. So he was he was uh, he seen what happened on uh, Tuesday night, and he, if I was him, I wouldn't have been impressed because it was a very bad performance. But he's in. Don't know too much about him. He's had European experience. I think I think he's played in the Europa League with Sporting. He's had league experience at the age of 23, he can grow, especially if we do decide to buy him at the end of the season after his uh, loan deal's up. Hopefully he turns out to be a good centre-off because him and Warrell at the back could be a very good partnership. But we had to see him put on a red shirt yet. Yeah, hopefully we will at Fulham, if not then hopefully we will against um, Hull. But that's all I've got on him. It's a loan deal with you to permanent 23-year-old Portuguese centre-half. Probably butchered his name but never mind. He will. Hopefully he'll go in, in Mancian's position because Mancian has never put a foot wrong. He makes mistakes every so often. He panics on the ball. He's not the most comfortable on the ball, and it's not what. And it showed that on Tuesday night. He got put under pressure. I tried passing it back to Smith, completely, utterly wasted his chance. And then they go and score, and then he gives the ball away for the third goal. Pulls his man down for no apparent reason. So Mancian had a shocker on Tuesday night. So maybe Figueiredo is in because. He wants to get rid of Mancien, but who knows. Going on to the deadline day signings, and this is a double deal. It's Ashkan Dejeha, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, and Costel Pantelamon. Dejeha is on a permanent deal until the end of the season, on a half-year contract, if you like, because he, is a, he was a free agent after Wolfsburg released him. He's a winger. He's played for Fulham and Wolfsburg, as I've said, so he's got experience in the Premier League when Fulham was there. Um, Wolfsburg top of the um, top um, division in the Bundesliga competitive division if you'd like to say so in Wolfsburg position like to get into the uh, top four etc in that league he's a 31 year old can play on the wing he can play either wing and behind the striker which I think um, gives him an extra dimension to his game he says uh, on his tweet I think he's like aggressive on the pitch or something so he hopefully he can bring excitement to the fans and this is what we need, we need players that want him to play for this uh, play for this fantastic football club because we've not had players like that in a long long time and they need to be proud every time they pay, uh, put on that shirt. And the other deal is Costel Pantelamon from Watford on loan for the season, the 31 year old goalkeeper, 6 foot 8, he's a man mountain of a guy. He's a... Uh, he got experience, put it that way. He's played for Watford. He was on loan to Deportivo before Watford called him back to send him to us. But his most famous role in football was when he um, was at Man City. He was uh, on the bench most of the time behind Joe Hart. But he played in the cup games, an odd league game when Hart was injured or anything. And he was in a part of that title winning team, I think. And uh, can only add experience to the team. It gives Smith a chance to prove that He's good enough to play for Forest. In my opinion, he's not. I don't like him one bit. He needs to get out of the club. But a lot of fans say that he is a go okay goalkeeper, despite his uh, kicking um, things. But yeah, hopefully Pantelamon can get the start, and hopefully it will push Smith to that next dimension in his game to try and put Pantelamon under pressure for the number one shirt. We see uh, three departures out of the club. Cario has his contract cut, and then he goes on to join Ipswich later on, on deadline day night. Cario never really impressed for Forrest. He had these odd games where he'd rip for a team, then another game where he'd give every ball away, not beat his mum once and be completely out of the game. Then we see Tyler Walker leave on loan to Bolton, which was a shock earlier in the week when I found out that it was an ongoing deal. I never thought, Tyler Walker will be leaving the club 
because I thought he'd made himself into the first squad, if you like, to sit on the bench, etc. But he's gone to Bolton on loan, and then Matt Mills leaves the club and has his uh, contract terminated to go to Barnsley, which I'm happy about. Mills was never going to play under Karanka. I don't rate him one bit. But he's gone out of the club now. Deadwood gone. The uh, wages gone. And to another incoming now. And this is a surprise one that no one heard about all week until about 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon yesterday on deadline day. Joe Lolly signed a 4.5 year deal for an undisclosed fee at Nottingham Forest from Huddersfield. Now he's got promotion with Huddersfield. He's played in the Premier League for Huddersfield. Huddersfield fans love him. But... um Obviously, he wants to come and play for Forest, which I'm not sure why, uh, if you watch the performance on um, Tuesday night, but he's a good winger, 25 years of age. I think he can play both wings. He's got pace, uh, skillful. He's got an end product to him. He can finish. So hopefully he can um, come in on either wing. Hopefully it's not Cash's wing, because I think Cash has been the best player under Karanka so far. He's played excellent. So hopefully he'll play on the left wing and keep Cash at right. But I think Joe Lolly could be a very good signing for his four and a half year deal. That's a very long deal. And uh, a player of his quality, if you'd like. A lot of Huddersfield fans, when they found out he left last night, was going crazy because they wanted him to stay. But then he goes on to another departure, and it's Henderson leaving on loan to Portsmouth. Everyone could see this. Pantillamon coming in would also lead to Henderson going out. So that was just a, a backfire between Pantillamon. If Pantillamon came in, Henderson was going out, and then Portsmouth took him. Then it's a swap deal, one of the most interesting ones out of the thingy, no one, this one came out of the blue, it was reported earlier on, um, when uh, it was reported on Wednesday morning that Lee Tomlin was interested in joining Forrest, Fun Forrest was interested in joining him but they wanted a swap deal and it would only be a loan, so Ward was meant to be going out on loan to Millwall, so I think we cut that one short and sent Ward on loan to Cardiff, and we got um, Tomlin on loan. Both loan deals to the end of the season. I'm not sure if there's a permanent a view, um, view to a permanent deal at the end of the season or anything like that. Because if there is, then Ward would be going to Cardiff, Tomlin would be coming to us, obviously. But I think Tomlin at this level is a very good player, very skillful on the ball, good, a very technical player. Not the quickest or anything like that, but he's very good with the ball at his feet. He can pick a pass, rip through teams with one ball. He's that type of player. Not sure how he's been getting on at Card Cardiff because I don't follow them, but I wish the uh, best of luck to Jamie Ward who's gone on to Cardiff. Liked Ward as a player, but he's just really fell out of the squad because his injuries, etc. So he's not really going to get a chance under Karanka at the age he's at as well. So Tom Lees is, not, is a Nottingham Forest player. And then Clough follows Tyler Walker to go back to his old club Bolton on loan to the end of the season. Now, I've got a feeling, it's not been released yet that this has got a view to a permanent deal, but I think there's, I've got a feeling there's something in there because back to his old club, he'll want to stay there if he impresses again. So if he does impress, then he out. I'm, from my opinion, I, I expect him to join in on a permanent next season. Clough... Obviously got that famous goal against Derby. I say famous because every goal against Derby is famous. Got the goal against Derby in Warburton's first game last season. Tapped it under the keeper. Not really done anything else after he signed in last January. I think he signed on deadline day last January for Forest. Never really impressed. He's been average and below average for all his performances. He maybe had one or two good games where he'd keep the ball, etc. But not thingy. And then two very good signings in my opinion. Jack Colback, the holding midfielder, 28 years of age, on loan from Newcastle. He's been at Sunderland, Newcastle. He's been around in the Premier League. He's got some championship experience. He's a very good player. He's probably on high wages, but that's what Forest need at the minute. We need quality players in the middle of the park. Not taking disrespect to Vaughan, Brigcott, Dowell, etc. But we just need someone that's going to demand the midfield, etc. Hopefully Colback can be that um, guy. He can play left back because he is left footed. I've seen him play left back a few times for Newcastle. So could he be utilised as a left back instead of a holding midfielder? Maybe. So Brickhook can keep his position. But the most I think every fan's looking forward to seeing him back in a Forest shirt is Adling Guediora. He signed a two and a half year deal back at Nottingham Forest at the age of 32. We all know what he's got. He box to box mix. He's a box a box to box midfielder. He can attack with pace, power, pinging balls through, but he can also sit in front of the defence and keep a, like, a solid wall in front of the defence so no one can get through, and I think that's what I love about him. I think he's happy to be at the club, um, seeing his tweets last night. 
we get to see them rocket shots and then back from him. He's got a strike on him. And um, I'm just so glad that he's back in Nottingham Forest Red instead of any other club. Remember, he joined on loan for us, I think, in the 2012 season. I think then he joined on a permanent deal after that. Then we sold him to Palace, they sold him to Watford, and then they sold him to Middlesbrough. So he's been around since um, he left Forest, three different clubs. But now he's back at Forest to, for a two and a half year deal, and I expect him to retire at Forest now at the age of 32. Giving him a two and a half year deal, that's going to take him to the age of 34, maybe in 35, I don't know when his birthday is. But another deal that's meant to be in the pipeline and ready to be announced when the deal's over the line is Ben Watson. Now he was in the match day squad for Watford's game last night. But then they got the offer from Forrest, so they took him out of the matchday squad and made him travel down to Nottingham. It was originally a loan deal to the end of the season, but I I think there was a little like glitch in the system where the deal would not been a, wouldn't have been done before the eleven o'clock deadline. So he and Watford came to an agreement of cancelling his contract so he can join Forrest on a permanent deal after the deadline. So we're expecting that one to be announced. Today it's come out that Traore is set to have his contract cut. I think it's already been done and he's going to go join Cardiff. So Cardiff going to the free agents again, Neil Warnock. Um, but yeah, that's the main deals. And then obviously if you're a Forest fan and you were following the deadline day yesterday, you'd know that Michael Dawson was back in Nottingham ready to sign and put pen to paper on becoming a Nottingham Forest player again. Hull, oh, I don't think I ever said that he could leave. But he's running out of contracts at the end of the season, so he travelled down to Nottingham to uh, uh, yeah travelled um, to Not down to Nottingham to speak with Forrest. I think they got some sort of deal agreed on a two and a half year deal for Michael Dawson, where Hull only offered him a one. He was not very happy with the Hull owners, the Hull manager, for only offering him one year because of contract because he originally wanted to stay at Hull and retire there. When he found out Forrest was interested, he actually heard the offer, wanted it. But then the whole owner said, Michael Dawson's not going anywhere, so we're not agreeing a deal with Forrest, so he can play out his contract. So that could be a deal that we could be seeing in the summer, Michael Dawson to Forrest. Like I said, he was in Nottingham, he was at the training ground all yesterday, I think that's what the rumours. Ready to put pen to paper, but the whole owner's pulled uh, the plug on the deal. But that's going to do it for the end of the video. Um, if you've disagreed with anything I've said, if you've agreed with anything I've said, then put it down in the comments below. I want to know your opinions on the signing, every single signing, uh, every single exit. Put it down in the comments below what you think your opinions are. Subscribe if you haven't because I'm trying to hit 300 subs. And until then, see ya.